I haven't done a blowout in almost a year, not for any particular reason, it just hasn't happened. But I have gotten quite a few requests for this, so I am going to do an updated version for you all here. Whenever you are going to use direct heat, it is even more imperative that your hair is clear of all previous product and buildup to prevent burning. So I am going to use the Scalp Plus Curl Clarifier first. I am focusing on massaging into my roots and scalp, and then I will rinse out. Next, I am going to use the Curl Hydrator Shampoo to gently cleanse, start the detangling process, and install that boost of moisture needed for heat styling. I cannot stress enough how important your cleansing process is in general, but especially when you intend to use thermal tools for styling. You want to make sure all that old product and debris from outside is removed. After massaging this through for about a minute or so, I am going to rinse and deep condition with the Curl Restoring Treatment. This is going to fill in any holes in the cuticle layer of the strand and ultimately make the strand sturdier and less prone to breakage or damage. This treatment focuses on protein moisture balance and that is crucial to having curls that expand and contract back to their original shape after various types of styling. I am using my hot head cap to add heat to this and process. You can also use a hooded dryer or blow dryer attachment or a steamer. After rinsing out the treatment, my hair is soft and feels nice and taut and smooth. Now I am going to use Apogee Restructurizer and Caracare Thermal Wonder Spray as my leave-in and thermal protectant combo. And then I'll divide my hair in sections for blow drying. The leave-in in my collection is okay for blow dryer use, but I would not recommend it for direct heat such as flat irons or curling irons because it was not created to withstand hundreds of degrees of heat pressing onto the strand. I chose the Restructurizer and Thermal Wonder Spray because I've gotten great results with these in the past on myself and others. However, there are lots of great thermal protection products out there to choose from. Just make sure you use one. I am using the Ion Magnesium Ceramic Blow Dryer and the Ion Ceramic Round Bristle Brush. I like this combo because this dryer cuts down on my dry time due to the magnesium element in the dryer and this brush allows me to get maximum tension with the grip of the pins and smoothing from the bore bristles. Notice how I am angling away from my scalp with the blow dryer nozzle and using it in a downward sweeping motion to keep the cuticle smooth while allowing the brush to stretch the section. When stretching hair with heat and tension, you wanna make sure you are methodically choosing and using your tools correctly. I am going for maximum tension on the blow dry because I am going to use less heat on the flat iron. Plus, I know that the bristles in this are going to result in less frizz for my texture. I also have very dense hair that likes to hold water, so using a combo brush is going to speed up my dry time. There are lots of brushes to choose from, it just depends on your desired result, texture, and dexterity. If you have a lot of texture and it is necessary to use higher heat on your flat iron to smooth, go for less tension on the blow dry. So for example, you can use a paddle brush to stretch the hair instead. So you can see what I mean, I am going to do a section of my hair with a paddle brush. Yeah, it gets straight, but it's not quite as smooth as what I get with the other brush. After all of the sections have been blow dried, I'm going to go through with a little cool shot to seal everything down, and then I am going to clean up these ends. I usually cut my hair wet. For me, either way is fine because I have a consistent rate of shrinkage all over. If you have varying levels of shrinkage, a curly cut may be better for you, especially if you're only wearing your hair straight every blue moon. However, your ends need to be cut on at least a quarterly schedule, I understand finding a stylist you want to cut your hair can be challenging depending on where you live, but don't let that become an excuse to let your ends go to Splitsville. I have been cutting my own hair for years. I am also licensed and I am also using professional Japanese steel shears. 
please do not get any bright ideas about cutting your hair with craft scissors as you will further split the strands. My point here is to show you that length retention largely depends on keeping your ends from splitting at the rate that your hair is growing. I am going to use the Ion Magnesium 1 and a 4th ceramic flat iron to set one pass barrel curls. A barrel curl is a continuous rotation with the iron that begins at the root by lifting the section. After a half revolution, you start sliding hair through the iron. In my case, to accommodate the length, I am going to have to feed the hair into the iron to the ends to complete the curl. This motion requires a balance of tension where you are gripping the iron more on the slide and releasing some tension on the handle during the turn. I am using curl clips to hold each set of curls until I'm done, otherwise known as hard setting. If you have done a low tension blowout, you need to use smaller sections for flat ironing because your blow dry has left more texture in the hair. It really just takes practice to get the hang of curling like this in one pass. Now you can absolutely use more than the 380 degrees of heat I am using here as long as you've set it up right. To this point, I have thoroughly clarified and cleansed my hair, deep conditioned with a restorative treatment, used a repairing leave-in and a heat protection spray. I have used a ceramic brush and ceramic dryer and now I am using a ceramic iron. If you do not shield your strands with proper protection and too much heat is passed through the strands, you can have loss of curl pattern or what is commonly referred to as heat damage. It's not the fact that you're using heat, it's what kind of heat and in what process. You have probably noticed, if you've been following me for years, that I don't use titanium tools. Not because they don't work, they actually work a little too well. Titanium allows a lot more heat to pass through the strand. With overuse, that can dry the strand from the inside and leave it vulnerable to burning or destruction of the bonds. I'm not saying you can't use titanium tools, I just don't recommend them for textured hair. After all the curls are done, I am going to do a little heat blast and cool it back down with the cool shot to set the curls and then I'm gonna go get dressed. When I come back and take the clips out, what I have are voluminous, smooth, shiny curls. I am going to add a little tiny bit of Chi Silk Infusion and take my rake comb and comb all of these out and blend them together and I am done. Total time was about two and a half hours. That is a long time for styling for me, but considering that I now have waist length hair, I am proud of myself for getting it done that fast. At night, I sleep in a Bantu knot with a satin scarf and let it down in the morning. For workouts, I have another process and will be sharing that in the next video. So subscribe and stay tuned. You can find the Monos Hair Curl Collection in Sally Beauty stores and online at sallybeauty.com. You can find links to other thermal care tutorials as well as links to everything used in this tutorial in the about section below this video or by visiting monoshair.com.